bit nervous about tonight's show, and I want to assure you that tonight's show is going to be different. I am not, I am not going to use cheap sexual humor and exploit women and do things that are demeaning. I want to raise the bar, the standards of comedy. I want this to be something special. I want to appeal to all that is good and pure in your hearts. That is what means the most to me. Remember, it's all in the presentation. They say, they say in public speaking, they say in public speaking that you should tell the audience a little bit about yourself so you can build kind of a bond and we can feel some empathy back and forth. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try that. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. But I've got to tell you, one of the challenges I have is that I'm kind of an angry person. And why am I angry? Because I look at the way our world works and I see all these segments of society, the Gen Xers, Gen Ys, yuppies, singers, dancers, actors, old people, young people, all these people get so much attention. There's magazines for them, television shows, they get all kinds of attention. And the group that I belong to, the group that I belong to gets no attention at all. The group that I belong to are known as bugs. Big ugly guys. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy being a bug. I mean, the only time you're ever going to see a bug on television is on an episode of America's Most Wanted. I tell you, you don't know the meaning of fear until as a bug you walk down the aisle of a crowded airplane and you look at the fear in the passenger's eyes. <laughs> and you go, oh, please, big ugly guy, don't sit beside me. <laughs> I tell you something, though. You don't know the meaning of the word fear until you see the look in my mother-in-law's eyes when I visit her and I make, I kind of fake her out, make like I'm going to sit in her 80-year-old antique chair. <laughs> but it always amuses me. It always amuses me to watch how she deftly steers me to the chair in the corner that's made out of concrete and two-by-fours. <laughs> but you're probably wondering, bugs do serve a very important function in society. Maybe you're not aware of it, but I'm going to share it with you tonight. A lot of you beautiful people have wondered, you know, a typical thing that happens every day. Beautiful girl, driving down the road, she's putting on her makeup, she's talking on the cell phone, she veers off the road, drives down the sidewalk, and is finally stopped by a police officer. Well, what's going to happen? She's going to get off with a warning. You know, in future, if you could, you know, maybe put the cell phone down, don't drive on the sidewalk, try not to kill people, they get off with a warning. But have you beautiful people ever wondered why it is you get off with a warning? I mean, we know that police officers have quotas. So why is it that beautiful people get off with a warning? The reason is, is because that police officer knows that coming down the road is a big ugly guy that they can throw the book at. <laughs> I am that big ugly guy. A while back, this is typical, driving along in the middle of nowhere, fields on either side, fields for miles, clear blue sky, police officer pulls me over. Now this guy gets out of his car, jumps out of his car, comes running at me like he's caught Jack the Ripper. Comes up to the car, sir, do you know how fast you're going? I've done this before. Yeah, well officer, not really, but uh, perhaps you can help me with that. <laughs> you realize, sir, that you were going 11 kilometers an hour over the limit? Well, I'm thinking somebody's going to get their quota today. Uh, officer, come on. We're out in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing but fields around here. Maybe we can uh, just give me a break on this. The officer, because I always got to give you a lecture, the officer looks at me and he says, Sir, do you realize that this area is slated for development? There could be children playing here someday. <laughs> Well, I knew there's a whole thing around unborn children, but I didn't realize that it extended itself towards uh, speeding tickets. Anyway, the officer carries on, and he goes back to his car to write me up. And so I thought I'd call my wife and let her know this latest outbreak. So I picked up my cell, and I called her. The officer comes back. What do you think you're doing? Well, sir, I was just calling my wife. She's going to let her know it's going to be delayed a couple of minutes. 
Sir, do you not know that in Ontario it is illegal to operate a cell phone unless the motor vehicle is turned completely off? Your engine is still running. Officer, come on. Please. We're in the middle of nowhere and parked. As I'm saying this, I'm looking. These two kids and their dad's BMW come racing by at about 175 kilometers an hour, followed right behind by an elderly couple driving backwards in the wrong lane. <laughs> I look at the officer and go, like, maybe you want to catch some of these people? He's not interested. He's got himself a big, ugly guy. Anyway, he looks at me and he says, well, I'm going to have to give you a ticket for speeding, reckless driving, careless driving, and operating a cell phone while driving a motor vehicle. And I'm thinking, well, this is great. Anyway, as he's walking back to his car, I just happen to look at my rearview mirror, and I see this Cadillac Escalade SUV screaming down the road at me, and it veers off the road and slams into the back of my car. Now, just as I get launched into orbit, I happen to see that the two kids in the front seat, they're not even paying attention to the road. They're making out. And as I'm sailing through the air in my Toyota, I can't help thinking to myself, I wish someone had told these horny kids that cruise control doesn't actually steer the car. <laughs> anyway, my Corolla bounces down the road, flips over a few times, and comes to a rest about, I don't know, 100 yards down the road. I'm upside down, and I hear the police siren. I hear the police siren. The guy's got back in his car, and he's driving all the way down to see me. <laughs> So when he gets there, so when he gets there, I'm not quite sure what to expect, so but he says to me, Sir, did you not see there was an accident back there? I said, well, yes, officer, actually, I did. In fact, I was that accident. <laughs> Sir, do you realize in Ontario that you have to remain at the scene of an accident? Why did you leave the scene of an accident? <laughs> officer, I think it has to do with physics. When a Cadillac SUV, which is only slightly, which is only slightly smaller than an aircraft carrier, hits a Toyota Corolla, which is only slightly larger than a roller skate, the natural reaction is that the Toyota Corolla is going to be knocked into another dimension. Sir, those poor kids back there have had quite a scare. It looks as though there might be some damage to their front bumper. Now I'm hanging upside down hanging in by my seat belt. And I said, well, gee, I'm, that's really tough on those uh, kids. Sir, I'm going to have to give you a ticket. I'm going to have to give you a ticket for failure to remain at the scene of an accident. And that's how police get their quota. And that's why all the beautiful people, when they get their warning, should say a big thank you to all the big, ugly guys out there that take it on the chin for them every day.